This is Vending Arena, a scratch game I made about two months ago for a YouTube video. Uh, the video got over 100,000 views. Yeah, um, anyways, I got so many comments on that last video asking for a mobile version of the game. But in this video, we're actually going to take it one step further by turning the game into an actual mobile app. But first, if you're new, let me tell you a little bit more about Bending Arena as a scratch game. To put it simply, you're in an elemental bending tournament, and in order to win, you need to beat the other elemental masters. You have a total of four matches. Earth, water, air, and the avatar, you being the firebender. Each successful victory unlocks a new skill, which will help you defeat the next master. For example, you start out with the fire blast skill, and if you're able to beat the avatar, you'll have the lightning ability. And once you beat everyone, you basically win the game. Alright, so, now we can finally begin the project. But... Before we get too ahead of ourselves, we need to take things one step at a time. Which brings us our first problem. Bending Arena was created as a PC game and it uses various keybinds to initiate different types of attacks and basic movement. That being said, besides the home screen and some random buttons, the game doesn't have a mobile interface at all, and that means that we need to give it some touch controls. First of all, basic movement. Our PC game uses WASD, which is the common standard, um, but for mobile, we have two general options, either a touchpad with arrow keys, or a joystick. But before I dive too deep, I want to explain what multi-touch is. Multi-touch is essentially when a game or app uses two sensing operations to register two button presses on the screen at the exact same time. It sounds complicated, but really all it is is just pressing the screen with two fingers. Now, a game like Flappy Bird is a single touch game because you only need to touch the screen once in order for the bird to hop. Now, this is an issue with our game since we need the player to be able to move horizontally and vertically at the exact same time to create kind of like a diagonal jump. Now, since multi-touch isn't really supported on Scratch, a joystick would probably be the better option since you can drag the control diagonally. On the other hand, with the touchpad, you can't press two buttons at once, which makes the movement feel really blocky. But thinking about these different controls made me realize that the game would actually need multi-touch either way since I want the player to be able to move and attack at the same time. So for about a week, I did research on Scratch multi-touch and I did find some promising tutorials um, like Riftmatch ones. But after testing out some sample versions of them, um, I realized that while they worked, it was just way too buggy. And after investigating some other samples, um, I just realized that Scratch's editor just wouldn't work. However, if you can recall, in my Penguin mod video, there are these finger blocks that supposedly allow multi-touch. And this was almost a perfect solution as well, since Penguin mod has its very own custom settings and its very own file packager, which we'll need later on in the video. For example, the default stage size for Scratch is a 3x4, but when you pull it up on a phone, there's a bunch of this black space here. If we use a 9x16 stage size, we can get rid of a lot of this black space, essentially making it look a lot more like an app. That being said, I saved Bending Arena to my computer and uploaded it. Simple as that. Okay, now that we're finally on Penguin Mod, it's time to start creating the controls. Okay, so this is my setup right here, and I'm going to be trying to playtest the game onto my phone. And um, you might be wondering how to get a project from my computer onto a completely different device. Um, and the answer is kind of complicated, but I'll try to sum it up. Um, so what I actually have to do is I actually have to save the project to my computer first. And once it's in my computer, then I have to upload it to my Google Drive. Okay, so now that that's complete, we're going to go over to my phone here. And we're going to go to the Google Drive app and refresh. And we can see it here. And then we're just going to download it. And once it's downloaded, we can go over to the, sorry for the glare, for, to the Penguin Mod app. And, and then we create a new project. And then what we gotta do is click file and then load from your computer. And then we pull this up, click that, and boom, we have the project in real time. Now, um, as you can see, everything is really tiny despite, so you can't really edit anything um, on mobile. But what you wanna actually do is go to the project page. It says auto rotate is on. All I gotta do is flip my phone, and boom, now I can actually play the game. 
And if you're wondering why I couldn't just access the the project over the cloud by simply just logging into Penguin Mod, um, for some reason the server was down and there was just no way for me to log in. So I kind of lost the audio for this part, but um, I didn't honestly have to do a lot of work. It was mainly just reformatting the sprites and costumes to look a little bit more cleaner on the screen since everything was still 3x4 format. Um, of course, I made the joystick, which took a little time, um, but after syncing it with the other player sprite, it managed to work with a little debugging. Okay, and after a day or so of straight coding, this is what we have. On the right hand side, we have the joystick for movement, and on the left hand side, we have these buttons, which are coded for each of the attacks. Um, one of them is for Fire Blast, one is for Fire Punch, Fire Raise, and Kabasha Shot, and finally Lightning. And each one, of course, unlocks at its respective level. Um, the movement is a little bit finicky, but the joystick works well enough, and I'm okay with that. But that being said, I went through six different versions of this testing, um, and on the seventh version, I hit another bug. Okay, so, um, it's been quite a while now, and for some reason, I just can't get my mobile controls to work. Um, so right here, let me uh, start it. So right here, you can move and the joystick works, which is all fun and great. But the second that you try to attack while you're holding the joystick, just the movement just stops. Like, and then I, I, I don't really know. Um, and I swear Penguin Mod's finger sensing buttons worked earlier, but now I just don't know what's going on. Um, the good news is Penguin Mod actually has a wiki fandom. So here it is right here, um, and if you go to the sensing part of it, which is over here, um, you can see all the different blocks and stuff, but the bad news is they don't have any um, written categories or section for that, so basically no one knows what that is, and apparently this week is actually outdated, so I went to the new one, and it still doesn't have anything, so if you click on it, um, it just says there's currently no text on this page, and I, I just don't know what to do. Um, and eventually, I just decided to go to the Discord and just try to ask them, like, does anyone know how it works? And I didn't really get any answers. Um, yeah. Yep, this basically means that switching over to Penguin Mod was basically useless. I could have just used Turbo Warp. I tried researching if other editors such as Gandhi ID had any similar blocks. Um, and they did have one similar sensing block, but I was honestly just wasting way too much time on this one issue. So I guess we'll just have to move on from it and maybe come back later. If any of you guys understand how this block works, please feel free to tell me, and if it does work, I'll try to update the game. But other than that issue, I patched some of the smaller bugs, and the game seems to be working just fine. Um, now we need to figure out a way to get the game on the Google Play Store, or figure out a way to publish it somehow. And... To be honest, after doing a ton of research, I realized this was really, really not going to be easy. Um, first of all, Google Play needs you to upload AAB game files, um, and Penguin Mod's Packager only produces HTML files. If you don't understand the difference between these files, it's totally okay, I barely do myself. Um, anyways, there's no such thing as an HTML to AAB converter, and I didn't know it yet, but this simple issue probably took the most time. Um, in simple words, I needed an HTML to APK converter and then an APK to AAB converter, um, both of which are impossible to find free versions of. Thankfully, there's this other scratch tuber named Zifalk, I hope I pronounced that correctly, um, and he was able to help me out a bit, and I finally got some help from the ping on my Discord. I honestly would not have been able to do this without LEGO Set 7. Um, he gave me this little trick and it honestly saved me so much time. Um, and yeah, I was finally able to get my hand on the Bending Arena AAB file, um, which we can finally try to upload to the Google Play Store now. Uh, yeah, this process was really painful, um, and even though the majority of the project just wasn't exactly coding, um, I was still really burned out by this process, so if you could subscribe, I would be really appreciative, and I really want to get this out to iOS as well, but I've heard that they're just even harder than Google Play, so I honestly just don't know at that point. Um, it also depends on how many people just support this video, to be honest. Um, but back to the project, it wouldn't be a complete mobile game without a goofy uh, mobile ad. So I hired a random person on Fiverr, and this is what they came out with.
honestly, I only paid $10 for it, so I'm not really arguing. It's not bad, but I feel like I could have done better. At the time of this video coming out, my game is still being reviewed by the Google Play Store. Um, and there are some issues that I'm just not sure can be fixed. Scratch, even Turbo Warp, wasn't exactly designed to create mobile apps. So if there's an issue um, with the source or version code and the game gets denied somehow, um, there's really not a lot I can do. When and if I can somehow bypass the review and the game is successfully published, I will let y'all know in my public discord. I make announcements on videos like this all the time. And we've got some fun events coming up too, so join it if y'all want to see more. However, in the meantime, I didn't want to keep y'all waiting too long, so I did put an APK file in the description of this video. Um, it's totally free for y'all to download and try out the game. And yeah, this project, um, believe it or not, it took about, I want to say, one month total. Um, maybe my second hardest project I've ever done. The first was making the game in the first place. And yeah, thank y'all for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.